Hi guys, it's Sarah from Bite Nerves and Fangirls, and today I will be doing a requested topic that was requested for me by Tarnell Blinger. She asked me if I could do a list of my favorite contemporary reads, so here I am today. Today with my favorite contemporary reads. I have my cat beside me. Right here. Well, you can't see her. She's not in the shot. I have my cat beside me. So if she jumps over, tries to play director or anything... I think I'm sorry about this. We're spending quality mommy and me time together, so. So she always loves spending time with me when I'm filming videos. It's actually quite hilarious. Hilarious. It's like she wants to be in the spotlight. Sometimes, but I still love her for it. So going on with my favorite contemporaries. This one was a little bit harder for me than if someone had asked me what my favorite fan series were. Because I am huge, was huge into fantasy when I was younger. Younger. I've only read a handful of contemporary books in my life because there are so many contemporary novels. But also, my favorite contemporary novels are the ones that have darker themes to them. So this is not a list of my light and fluffy contemporary reads. Reads be favorites because I actually really don't have light and fluffy contemporary read favorites. They, my contemporaries deal with darker subject matters. Matters because those are the type of contemporaries I love reading. Reading, but you know, everyone has their preference. Preference, and that just so happens to be mine. So, coming in at number one. One, I have... Well, I actually don't have... I listened to it on audiobook. It is actually one of my more recent favorites. I read it this year. This year, and that was Looking for Alaska by John Green. If you want to know my full thoughts about Looking for Alaska, I will link them down below. Below, I have a full book review, a spoiler e discussion about it. About it there, but this book definitely surprised me. It definitely dealt with a bigger subject matter, and it also had a very interesting corporation. Corporation, eh. Right, it does have a definitely interesting way of explaining religion in there. Religion in there, and if you know me, you know I'm not really a religious type of person, but this book does well in incorporating religion into their story. Their story, especially with a the theme at hand in the book. In the book. Now, at first, I didn't really like this book. This book's first half is very boring. Boring. Nothing really goes on in the first half that made me interested in it. But it was definitely the second half that made me love this book and made me put it on my favorite contemporary reads list. And it was just amazing. So I would tunge through it right now if you're getting through it and just get to the halfway point. Because the halfway point is when it starts getting really great. Really get great. So the next books I have here are part of my Laurelyn McDaniel series that I did yesterday. And that's Angels in Pink by Laurelyn McDaniel. Daniel, this story follow the series, actually. This is actually technically a se series of hers. This series follows Reyna, Kathleen, and Holly. Holly, while on their adventures of being candy stripers. Candy stripers, they're sophomores. They're looking for more extra credit, extracurricular activities to fill their scholarships up, so whenever Reyna volunteers them for their mother's ca her mother's candy stripper program at the hospital that her mother works at, shenanigans ensue, and it's just really awesome because I never really read about candy stripers, but this one is definitely one of my favorites. If I had to pick which one my favorite story was, Kathleen's story is the best, followed by Holly's story, and the story I liked the least was Raina's story, but that's because the subject matter it dealt with at the time didn't really hit close to me. Now, if I were to now read it, it would have affected me a little bit more than it did 
did when I read it when I was, I think I was 12 or 13 when I read those books. Those books, some of these books are really old, just to throw that out here. The second book I have here, it says what goes around comes around, what goes around, around, but the girl, the one I'm going to talk about since I haven't read Cracked Up To Be yet, I'm working on Cracked Up To Be, Up To Be, but I have read some girls are in this thing. I was all like, hmm, I really want it, one day I was like, I really want to buy that book I read in the library called Some Girls Are, but this is the only book I could find that included it in there, and I hadn't read Cracked Up To Be, so I got it. I got it, but... This book is by Courtney Summers. The one I'm talking about is Some Girls Are. Some Girls Are deals with a girl named Regina. She has it all. She's a popular girl. Popular girl. She has a great set of friends. Of friends. And she, everyone in her school is terrified of her because of it. But one night after a party... A party. Regina endures something. Endures something at the party that is actually in the beginning of the book, but I don't want to spoil what happened. Happens because it's a major plot point for what happens to her in this book. In this book, so that happens, and suddenly after that night, Regina is no longer a part of her click, she's shunned out by the popular girls, and is now bullied by the same people she it used to call friends. But she's also an outsider because she has made so many people hate her. Hate her. This book really dealt with the more vile and disgusting parts of bullying that a lot of people don't really talk about. Talk about. A lot of people say, ah, bullying's not that bad. That bad. It's just words. No one could really hurt you. But this deals with very physical and violent bullying as well as verbal bullying. Bullying. And it was just, it's, it was a really hard one to get to. Courtney Summers, if anything, writes bullying really well and how evil some girls really are when it comes to bullying. And it was just one of my favorites up to date. Okay. The next book I have here is a book I actually read this year, and that's The Hate You Get by, by Angie Thomas. This book follows Star, Af Star and the outcome, outcome and dealing she has to face after witnessing her best friend getting shot by the police. But the police, if you want to read a book about the Black Lives Matters movement, I would definitely recommend this book. This is from... First time author Angie Thomas, and she writes such a realistic book that I found myself getting angry with this book. I got angry, I got sad, there are some happy part, parts, and there's definitely a lot of emotional impact in this book. This book, which makes it one of my favorites of the year, but it's not my actual favorite of the year. I'll get to that during my favorites video in December, but right now it's definitely on the top five list of this year. The next book I have for you here is Garden of Angels by Laura Lynn McDaniel. I read this book when I was 12 years old, and my family was going through, through difficult times. My great-grandmother was diagnosed with non-Hopkins lymphoma around that time, so I really wanted to pick up books that dealt with this subject matter. Matter. So I picked up this one, and it has been one of my favorite contemporary reads ever since then. I remember getting so emotionally invested in Darcy's story about her mother having breast cancer. Breast cancer. This book was also set in 1974. 74, and really shows the impact a person's cancer could have on their family, as well as themselves. Themselves, because there are some entries showing what it's actually doing to Darcy's mother. Mother, and if you really want a author that's really good at writing books about about this horrible disease, I would definitely recommend Laura Lee McDaniel. She's really good at writing about it. 
about it, and I definitely liked it. Now, on a similar note, I have Telling Christina Goodbye by Laura Lehman Daniel. This is a little bit more of a different story because it deals with the death of a really close and best friend. This follows the story of Trisha, Trisha who has three be best friends, or should I say... Say one boyfriend, a boy that her best friend loves, which is her boyfriend, and a boy that she doesn't really... And her best friend, Christina. One night after Tucker's basketball game, they all decide to drive home where Tucker's van hits a patch of black ice out on the road and changes their lives forever. Forever. It leaves Trisha blind in one eye, Cody in a coma, Tucker with barely even a scratch on him, and it leaves Christina dead. Dead on impact. On impact. This book really deals with grief as well as dealing with the outcome of a car accident. Accident after it's taken so much from you already already and that's just like poor Trisha in this book she has to deal with a lot we follow Trisha in this book in this book and having to her deal with the death of her best friend on top of everything else was just tragic and I loved it so much so much Stella Raymond the next book I have here is Snitch by Allison Van Diepen Steven, sorry if I'm saying this wrong. This book follows Julia. Julia, who, while in high school, follow, falls for the leader of a gang. A, a rival gang to her, the school she goes to. She goes to, so this is her... Her falling for the leader of a gang. But instead of just, you know, being the norm... Being a girlfriend to a gang leader, she decides that she wants to join the gang to prove herself worthy to this guy. This guy. So it deals a lot with gang initiation and being in a gang. In a gang. And I've never really read a story about people in a gang. Actually, I think this is the only book besides The Outsiders that I read about that. About that but it's definitely a good one. I liked it. I did. Next book I have for you here is Speak by Lori Halls Anderson. This deals with with a mute girl in school. I can't really remember her name because it's rarely even mentioned in this book. In this book, this book does have a movie adaptation to it with Kirsten Christian Stewart, I believe. Is that how you would say her name? But that's the only role Kristen Stewart ever had that I actually really liked her in besides Panic Room. <clears throat> Panic Room. This tells the story of a girl. She is mute. Moved. She shunned in her school because of what happened to her at a summer party where she called the cops. But it tells a story about what actually happened in that party in snippets. And it's really hard to get through after you really find out what happened to her. So speak. It deserves the award it got. Honestly, and I just loved it so much. The next book I have for you here, here is another book that I read, like, last year that happened to be one of my favorites, and that's Everything, Everything by Nicola Yoon. This deals with a girl named Maddie who is allergic to everything. Everything. She's very happy in her life, in her little bubble. Bubble house. But she's always wanted to see the outside world, even though she couldn't. And then one day she meets her next door neighbor neighbor named Ollie Ollie and realizes that maybe the outside world isn't as scary as she once thought after all after all this is a great book with a very shocking twist when it comes to this book and I totally loved it I like contemporary books that have shocking twists to them them and it's really interesting to learn about my disease because I really didn't know a lot about people who are allergic to everything I've heard about them haven't really done my research so this book was definitely a good one to learn about it 
about it. And it was a great novel, and I loved it so much. So much. The next book I have for you here is yet another book I read last year. And that's November 9th by Colleen Hoover. This tells the story of Felon and Ben. And Ben, who meet on the same day for the next six ye years, I believe. I believe. And what happens on this specific day that they meet? They meet. It was a really great story. And, of course, it has a twist. Because what book do I love that's a little bit darker that doesn't have a twist? A twist of it. Well, and while some people do have problems with this book, and I could see how this book would be problematic in terms of her love interest, I still really enjoyed it. It was definitely better than this one book that I read read this year called uh, The Song Will Save Your Life. I really hated the love interest in that book. That book for a lot of specific reasons, because that was an actual abusive relationship right there. Right there, emotionally, and I just couldn't deal with it. it. He was like the epitome of a fuckboy in that book. That book. But Ben's a little bit less of a fuckboy in this book. But so I could definitely deal with him a little bit better than I could. Charming in that other book, or Char, whatever his name was. Ugh. Next book I have here dealt with a really big subject matter that I really hated. Hated? So whenever this book came out, I was all like, I don't know how to feel about about it. I don't condone cheating, but this book does deal with the subject of cheating, and this book is Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. I like this book a lot because it deals with a main character who's deaf. Who's deaf, and I really don't read a lot of books about deaf main characters. main characters, and it also has a very interesting topic of music, and I like books about music, and my cat is actually playing photographer again. Sorry about all the different candle camera angles. Angles, she's gonna start pushing the computer here in a minute. Minute, just watch. But it definitely deals with, uh, Sin Sydney and Ridge, and they have an attraction that they can't really ignore, but while they do have, they are a cute couple, I must say, at the ending of the book, I really didn't like what they did, they did to the other girl in this novel, because it was just, uh, so if you want to know my thoughts on Maybe Someday, I do have a book review for it, so I'll link it down below, I don't think I have November 9th book review, view, but I'll, Link down the reviews of all these books I have down below. The next book I have for you here is one was one of my favorites from last year, and that was Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone. This deals with a girl named Sam. She is dealing with OCD, more of the compulsive. Well, actually, not even compulsive, more of the obsessional part of OCD than the compulsive part of OCD. Which, I never really read a book that was focused on purely obsessional OCT. So, whenever I read this, it was amazing how much it blew me away. And how much I thought Sam was... Why are you playing Mommy Feet? Feet. But it's amazing how much I loved Sam in this book. She reminded me a lot of myself in some ways. Some ways, but it deals with Sam and her obsessional compulsive disorder, as well as being involved in a poetry club. Slam club? I like the poetry slam club a lot. I didn't really like a lot of the poetry in this book. In this book, because I've actually read better poetry than this. But it's definitely a good one to pick up. Pick up if you're looking for something different. Different. And, of course, it has a twist. So the next book I have here for you, I don't have the cover of because I borrowed it from the library, but I do have the second book in the series, and that's A Child Called It by Dave Pleasure. Pleasure. So the first book deals with A Child Called It. Child Called It, and it's about really a book about child abuse and what happens to this child. 
this child during his time as a child, and it was definitely a book that I was required to read, but I'm glad I was required to read because it was an amazing book, and it definitely deserves all the hype it got. It got, it was really sad, and it was, uh, it was just so good. <clears throat> so good, I wish I had the copy of it, I don't, but I'll be getting one soon. Sure enough. So the next book I have here for you doesn't really shock people, and that's 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. I read this book when I was 14, maybe 15. 15, and it's been one of my favorite contemporary reads since. This deals with a boy named Clay. Clay, one night after he comes home from school, school he has a box full of containing 13 kids set tapes 13 actually i think it was 7 cassette tapes that had 13 sides on them them and it and the and whenever he listens to them it turns out it is from his fellow deceased student Hannah Baker Hannah Baker and the tapes contain the 13 reasons why she committed suicide on them I liked, I loved listening to this book, and I love the TV show adaptation of this book on Netflix. Netflix, this book really hit me hard on what one little thing you say or do could affect a person. I do have a book versus TV show blog out on this, so I'll link that down below. It's just, it's really great. <clears throat> I can't say, even, say enough about it. The next book I have for you here is actually all by by one girl, and that's Ellen Hawkins. When did this turn into an Ellen Hawkins recommendation video, <clears throat> guys? But yeah, I would definitely recommend all books by Ellen Hawkins. She's definitely one of my favorite authors of all time, besides Rochelle Mead. Me. But the first book I have for you here is Crank by Ellen Hawkins. This deals with a girl named Christina. Christina, she is the all-time perfect student. She's a straight-A student. She has great friends and a great social life. And then all of this changes when she meets the monster. The monster, and it's just her downward spiral from the perfect student and the perfect daughter to someone she barely even knows and recognizes. And this is a great book dealing with the subject of being on drugs. On drugs. This, I, I will say this now, there is a trigger warning in here for rape. Rape as well as drug use. So... Be warned when you're going into that book. I just wanted to put in a trigger warning for that in there. In there. It's a really great novel. And I remember reading it when I was 15, 16, and thinking, wow, this is a really great novel. The next novel, Glass, is actually really great as well. As well as this one. And I really didn't like the third novel. All that well, I can't remember what exactly real life of me it was called, but I remember not really liking it that much because it didn't follow our main character in the book, third book, but I did like the spin it did by involving all three of her children in there, but this character definitely is a great character, great character, and it shows how much drugs could really affect your life and the person you become, and it's just, it's great. Great. The next book I have for you here is Identical by Ellen Hawkins. Ooh, look how shiny that is. I catch the sun just right. Identical is the story of twins Renee and Kaylee. Kaylee, Kylie, however you say her name. Say her name. They couldn't be any more alike. Like physical wise, as they tried, if they tried, but these two girls are definitely not the same same person. Kaylee, I believe, Kaylee is the straight A student, student who is perfect in every way imaginable, imaginable. But she is harboring a really dark secret within her, within her that she can't really tell anyone, including her sister Renee. Renee, and then Renee is more of the outspoken, rebellious type. 
rebellious type, and there is a very, very, very dark subject matter in here. In here that I can't really get into because it's a huge spoiler, but there are quite a few trigger warnings in this in this book. In this book, and it de definitely deals with a really, really hard topic to get through. <clears throat> to get through, I actually want to reread Identical. I want to reread all of Ellen Hawkins' older books because they're amazing. Amazing. The next books I have for you here are Burned and Smoke by Ellen Hawkins. Ellen Hawkins Burned follows Peyton as well as Half of Smoke. Smoke. This one really deals with the aspect of religion. Religion and uh, going outside of your religion and not really fitting into your religion. Like Peyton does. Peyton is Mormon. Mormon, but she doesn't really feel like she's really a part of the Mormon religion. She feels like they just turn a blind eye when it comes to her father's abuse on her mother, mother as well as her father's alcoholism and beating his children. Children. So that's a great book to get into, and I can't really say much about Smoke because it follow follows the events after. Burned, and there's a huge spoiler for Burned in the beginning of Smoke, so I can't really get into it. But this deals with Peyton, as well as one of her sisters, Jackie. Jackie, and I can't t tell you how much I love these two. Burned is probably my more favorite than Smoke. Smoke was okay. Okay, but it was definitely a good continuation, and sorry. But look at- I, I like the whole paper and it being burned. It was- Great, and I like this one because it's the same piece of paper, but it's now burned, and here's the smoke on it. <clears throat> on it. But I definitely loved it. So the next book I have for you here is one I don't have the dust jacket for, but that's Tricks by Ellen Hawkins. Ellen Hawkins, this book uh, deals a very heavy subject matter of prostitution, and I never really thought about the cir different circumstances that could make people make the decision to go into prostitution, but this book is definitely hard-hitting, and I loved it so much. So much. And I will say that per well, Perfect did give me give me some good storylines in it. I didn't like all of Perfect, so it wasn't on this list, as well as Impulse. I really liked Impulse, but I didn't like the ending of Impulse. So I didn't really include it on this list, but there you guys have it. That was my favorite contemporary li reads list. List. If you have another suggestion for a recommended video, maybe my favorite fantasy of all time, or my favorite mystery novels, or anything like that, comment down below and let me know, and I'll do whatever recommendation you guys feel fit for me. For me, I love re doing recommendation videos as much as I love doing videos. But there you guys have it, and that's all I have for you today, and I will see you in my next video.